Right, hey guys, what's going on? So in the video today, I'm excited because in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Anson belts. Now these belts are somewhat famous and they've been around for a while. Actually, they started out in 2009 after collecting as many boots and as many nice leather accessories and pieces of gear that I have over the years. I've grown to have somewhat of a discerning eye when it comes to uh, leather accessories, belts particularly. They've become like a second interest of mine right after boots, I would say. Um, belts are very important. If you're a boot collector, I can't stress enough the importance of having the right belts. Jackets are another thing, but belts are probably second in line after your boots in terms of importance goes. So, And so I decided to get these all together and see how the ants and belts actually measure up to some of these small batch leather items. That's one thing that I've come to sort of realize after years of collecting is yes, you start out with the more commercialized stuff. And then me personally, I've gotten more into the small batch stuff in recent years. Small batch meaning you ask Isaac to build you one of these belts out of natural Chrome Excel with copper hardware, and he builds that for you. And there's probably maybe only 10, 20 in existence. You know what I mean? For example, Isaac did a run of, this is a really thick, waxy leather, 14 ounce from JNFJ Baker Tannery in the UK. It's a very difficult leather to get. and um, I think Isaac only made about 20 of these. So so that's that's what I'm talking about when I talk about small batch. That Small batch is kind of what I've evolved into collecting. Same with like uh, these boot makers. Most boot makers that I buy from are creating small batches. You know, runs of, I'm talking 10 to 20 boots tops in a run. So, and, and that's kind of how it all goes. You know, the, the more nuanced and exotic your collecting gets, the more small batch it becomes, the less mainstream and less commercialized and industrialized it becomes. And it, and it becomes more of a question of independent makers, like my friend Angel at Nobleman's Apothecary, who made me this belt. This is called the Wiz Belt. Yeah, this is a chrome tan leather from the UK. So Angel does a great job with his belts as well. So, so recently, in recent years, these are the types of belts that I've been collecting. You know, Pigeon Tree Crafting. This is Red, Red Tarns Joe. This is Nobleman's Apothecary. This is called the Hondo Belt. Uh, it's got an embossed pebble grain texture to it, very thick, hardy buckle. That's just an example of like the types of belts that I typically buy. Full grain, thick, hardy. My personal taste is I like things that stand out and I like things that are more robust. You know, like for example, uh, my watch here, this this is a Panerai, yeah, it's a Pam 024. And uh, I just love the manly look, the, the nice hardy, manly look that it has. Same with my boots, same with my belts. I like them all to have like a, a like a chunky, hearty look to them. That's kind of the aesthetic that I go for. And that's me. That's just how I've evolved as a collector and I'll continue to evolve long after I film this video, you know. But I just wanted to kind of preface this video with all that to kind of give an idea of where I'm coming from as a collector because um, most ants and belt reviews that I've seen on YouTube so far have mostly been on channels that are more kind of general style advice and things like this. People that maybe have come from a more traditional belt background. These belts here, these are my J. Crew belts and they are great. These are my dressier J. Crew belts. This I have in dark chocolate brown and this in tan brown. This is the dressy belt trifecta right here. Most guys belt collection probably looks, probably looks something like this, you know, if that, you know. In fact, some guy, most guys probably only have a black and a, and a chocolate brown. Most guys probably don't even have tan. I get excited about the exotic stuff, the rare stuff, the small batch stuff. I think so much of our community is, is looking for these types of more nuanced perspectives into this stuff because a lot of the information out there, it's not that it's bad or that it's incorrect, it's just that it, it doesn't get nuanced enough for a lot of us and, and that's kind of where I'm coming from as a collector. So how does Anson stack up against these other belts? And so this is a comparison that you're not gonna see anywhere else. First and foremost, they are phenomenal. I love these belts, these are amazing belts. Um, these belts are probably for 99% of guys out there. Now they do have a bit more of an industrialized feel, a bit more of a commercialized feel. I would actually compare them to, they're the Apple iPhone of belts, if that makes sense. And you know, I have an Apple iPhone, I love my iPhone. I actually wasn't too well aware of Anson belts until Carl Morawski, he did a review on these and highly recommended them, especially because he is the rugged outdoor type, but he also, does dress business casually. Carl Murawski has like a wide range of wardrobe needs. He highly recommends these Anson belts. And so when I heard that initially, I was intrigued. 
as I did more research, I realized there's a lot of guys that really love these belts, especially, and there seems to be a niche interest in these belts for concealed carry purposes. And being a bit of an EDC enthusiast myself, I've collected my fair share of everyday carry gear. I've mostly been interested in like, you know, the pens, the lighters, the key fobs, things of this nature. I love raw brass. I love copper. But when I saw so many people in the community talking about Anson belts, I thought, wow, I got to give these a try. The way I think of it is if I have the best boots, then I need to have the best belts as well. If you're the type that you're always reaching for the best thing, then you owe it to yourself to find the best accessories, whoever makes them. For years, I've been following um, pigeon tree crafting, and I've actually amassed quite a nice collection of belts from Isaac at Pigeon Tree Crafting. If you've been following me for a couple years, then you know that I just love these belts. I love that quick release function that it has, which initially I was skeptical of, and I kind of thought that these were a little fashion forward at first. I sort of evolved more into this type of an aesthetic as a belt lover. This kind of has an aggressive look. It, it's kind of fashion forward, if I'm being honest, but that's just kind of, that's what I like to wear. I like that hardier, chunkier look. But for most guys, and I would say that for 99% of guys out there, they like this more classic, this more sleek, dressy, lightweight, industrialized look. This belt buckle, the aesthetic of it is very sharp. It's almost kind of very futuristic looking. I would say that it is not as aggressive as the Pigeon Tree Crafting uh, Fireman's Buckle Quick Release Buckle. So this Anson Classic Buckle, this is a buckle for literally for most guys. If you're more into the classic traditional look, more of a classic traditional aesthetic that's your preference, then I would say that these Anson belts are definitely for you. For example, if you love Allen Edmonds and you love Alden, I think these belts would go very well with Allen Edmonds and Alden. Sometimes my Pigeon Tree Crafting belts don't always go, they don't always match the classic aesthetic of the Alden boots. Like if I'm gonna throw on my Alden long wing blucher wingtips, typically I'll reach for something like this, not something like this, this, Haz this Hazel Sedgwick belt. Just because the Hazel Sedgwick, it is a little bit more casual, it's a little bit more aggressive looking, and uh, so that's why for something dressy like the Alden Long Wing Blucher in tan calfskin, this would be a good choice. This is the J. Crew belt. I would definitely wear this Anson belt with my Aldens in tan calfskin because it's got the tan leather and it's more of a classic look. So if I'm going for the classic look and I'm going for the conservative look, I'll be reaching for the Ansons, definitely. If I'm going for, you know, kind of my typical day-to-day -day more bold style, then yeah, I'll be reaching for my Pigeon Tree Crafting belts. That's how I would compare Anson to Pigeon Tree Crafting and to Nobleman's Apothecary type belts. Again, Nobleman's Apothecary is just in a, in a league of its own as well. Very bold image it has going on. Very bold buckle, thick, hardy, holes, you know, traditional holes. Compare that against the Anson ratchet system. The concept of a quick release belt, which means basically as you release the belt, you don't need to tighten it to release it. So a, a traditional belt, you have to actually pull it tighter to get it undone. And with a quick release belt, you actually simply, there's a lever at the bottom, you press that and it pops open. Now that is good when you really have to pee the most painful thing in the world is to cinch the belt tighter before releasing it. It's very uncomfortable. It's it's just the worst thing in the world. The fact that you can actually release the belt quickly it changed my life forever. Let's just say that. I would compare it kind of like to stretch pants. Like you don't know that you needed stretch pants until you used them and you're like, and then once you start wearing stretch pants, you're like, oh my God, these are actually, <laughs> these are actually amazing. Well, so that's why when I got these Anson belts, I was already familiar with the quick release function. So these do function a little differently. Whereas on, on my traditional belts, they have holes. On the Anson belts, they actually, you could hear it, it's a ratchet system and it allows you to control for the exactness of how tight the belt fits you, which is really nice. You can control for up to a quarter of an inch. Now on most belts, you can only control for basically in most cases like a full inch. Like this belt, I got this from my friend Angel at Nobleman's Apothecary. It's called the Hondo. As you can see here, the holes are about a half inch apart. This is a more of a traditional belt with a traditional buckle. So so what happens is when you really have to pee, you have to pull it tighter, see? You pull it and see how, you know, you have to get some of the slack tightened in order to release the prong from the hole. 
and then you get it off. I love all kinds of belts. Like I'm not knocking any particular belt. I'm just I'm just trying to explain like the ergonomic aspect of of a quick release belt, which is when these Anson belts arrived, I was not familiar with the ratchet system, which you can see it here on this side. So there's not holes, but it's a system of ratchets that that allow you to adjust it very down to quarter inch exactness, which is really great. But yeah, I was I was already familiar with the quick release function. So see, when you're ready to get the belt off, there's a little lever right under here, this little lever right here. Yeah, you just pull that little lever out, belt slides right out. So again, with that quick release, you don't realize how much you're gonna love that quick release until you start trying it. And then again, that's the ratchet system. Very cool, novel, concept. I love that. Now, the, the first thing that actually kind of put me off from the Anson belts was uh, the straps are basically one size fit all. And so what that means is in most cases, when you get these things, if you don't have a 50 inch waist, then you have to cut some excess off of the end. Now there's two ends of the belts and it, and it does matter which end you cut from. This tapered end, you're not cutting from that, right? You want to cut from the the crude end. And you want to start by cutting less. And my advice is actually cut less than you think initially, because if you cut too much off initially, then there's no do overs, that sort of thing. So cut off less than you initially think. Then you simply, I have a belt like this from Ferragamo. The way that it fits onto the strap is it's got this little, this little mechanism with, with these spikes right here. They're real sharp. So you insert the belt into there and then you close it and the, and the spikes dig into the strap. And from there, it holds the strap in place and then boom, your belt is complete essentially. Once, once you've cut, once you've measured, then you're in good shape. So this is, the, this is the ratchet strip. My advice is maybe you wanna measure it so that you land somewhere in the middle of the ratchet on a good day. But the good news is, is you could lose weight, you could gain weight, and this belt is still gonna fit you just fine. And you can always control for that quarter inch exactness, which for me, you know, in the morning, my waist is smaller than after I had a big meal in the evening, obviously. So controlling for that quarter inch exactness, you don't realize how great that is until you actually start using it. So that, that's really cool. But yeah, let me start out by talking about these buckles. These buckles are really cool. So on, on the back end, it says Anson on it, very nice. And then the quick release mechanism is magnetic. It's held in place by a magnet. The magnet is actually, it's kind of confusing, but this magnet is right here. What use does the magnet have? Well, when you push this part, you see this mechanism is the quick release mechanism. It's far different from the one on the pigeon tree crafting belt, which actually the pigeon tree crafting belt holds its quick release mechanism shut through tension. As I demonstrated this quick release, see as I push that, there's an edge in this quick release mechanism that touches the magnet and that magnet is what draws it back in. So I, I press it open when I release, it falls back into place because of this magnet right here. So. And as you can see how this all connects, this quick release lever that you release the belt with is also activating that same mechanism. So I could press here to activate it. I can press here to activate it. It's all the same mechanism and it snaps back into place because of that magnet. So that, that's what's really unique about these belts. What's also really cool about Anson is they have a huge selection of straps and buckles that you can choose from. First thing to notice is Anson sells two different strap widths. So the dressier strap width is one and a quarter inch wide. Now I'm the type, I prefer one and a half inch belts, whether I'm wearing a suit, whether I'm dressing up or down, I actually love the one and a half inch with belts. I, I like more robust gear. I don't like my stuff to be dainty or thin or, you know, that's just my personal preference. I realize that a lot of guys, when they're throwing on a suit, they want a, they want a thinner belt. And I do have some thinner dress belts from like J. Crew that are probably an inch thick. So they have their purpose. I wear them periodically throughout the year, just depending on how dressy I want to get. Usually when I'm throwing on a suit, I'm throwing on something like this. And so this is one and a half inches wide and, and these work very well with a suit being one and a half inches. So I did not need to opt for the one and a quarter inch straps just because I am comfortable wearing the one and a half inch straps with most all outfits.
Okay, so if you wanted to get a one and a quarter inch strap, their smaller strap, they have 73 different straps on their website. Not to mention the buckles for one and a quarter inch width straps, they have the corresponding buckle. They have 31 different buckles to go with those one and a quarter inch straps. For the one and a half inch width, they have currently 86 different straps. That's a lot of straps to choose from. A little bit overwhelming. For the one and a half inch width buckles, they have 24 different buckles to accommodate those. It's important to remember that you do need to get the right buckle for the right strap. So the buckle width, it's either gonna be one and a quarter or one and a half. So whatever buckle you get, it has to go with the width of the belt. So it's either one and a quarter or one and a half. Ants and belts, essentially what's really cool is I got a combo set, three straps, three buckles. Three times three is nine. I did pay attention in uh, <laughs> in middle school math class. I don't know about high school math, but middle school math, I still remember some of that. Essentially, I have I have a possibility of making nine different belts here, which is really great. If you're the type that likes to accessorize and you like variety, then you cannot go wrong with this. You know, if I was the accessorizing type, I would buy like probably 10 or 20 of these straps over time and 10 or 20 of the, you know, 15, 20 of these different buckles. And guess what? Multiply the buckles, the number of buckles times straps. That's how many possible combinations that you can have. So for example, I had this rose gold buckle on this on this quarter of dress belt, right? Looks good. Well, what if I don't want that buckle on there? What if what if I want a more muted, a slightly more conservative look? Well, guess what? I throw on the gunmetal. Boom, done. It can be done in an instant. It takes no time to do this. That's what I love about it. It's kind of like putting on a tie clip. Like, you know, your suit's on, the tie is tied, your shoes are on, the belt's on, and now it's just time to, to throw on the final piece, the tie clip. That's, that's the final piece for me anyways. And then this is a silver classic buckle. Also looks very sharp with the cordovan or burgundy colored formal belt. That's how you can accessorize these, these belts. And that's what's so fun about Anson is you get the different straps and you get the different buckles and you can play around with the combinations. That's what I love. I love to play around with stuff. Like when it comes to my boots, I love playing around with different laces, seeing how they look, you know, and sometimes certain laces look really good with different types of trousers. So for example, like if I'm throwing on <laughs> some boots with some raw denim, that dark blue denim, obviously the aesthetic is going to be a lot different from a pair of like tweed trousers or chinos or corduroys depending on the overall outfit, the overall ensemble, the hardware that you're gonna select for the belt is gonna be just as important as, as the strap itself. So I got three different straps. I got this one, this is the formal belt in a color that they call cordovan. Then this one is saddle tan, vegetable tan. This is a more casual belt. This one smells so good. This is my favorite of the three for sure. This one, it's such that bright, brilliant, glowing orange color. I love it. It's just gorgeous. That's the one that I've worn the most actually. Now both of these work really well with suits. So I would wear this cordovan color with my color 8 shell cordovan Aldens and it looks very good. Not to mention I like to throw on my color 8 shell cordovan burgundy NATO strap on my Panerai when I wear this belt. And yeah the Panerai just works so well with the burgundy here. And then when I'm gonna throw on, actually I'm wearing that strap now. I have this natural Dublin double NATO strap from DeLuca straps on my Panerai here. The colorway is almost identical. They're both that nice rich orange vegetable tan brown. So yeah, this is natural Dublin. This is a tan, a vegetable tanned leather strap. Looks very, very good with this saddle tan, vegetable tanned strap. And then this one actually, this is called the Anson's Invincibelt. Now this one, this one is not always my style, but this one is really cool because there's no other belt like it out there. This is a one hell of a durable belt, and and the uh, the pattern on it is called woven. And I thought I thought that was a really attractive one. And I actually throw this one on with my black and gray striped NATO strap on on my Panerai. That's how I like to accessorize with this one. The Invincibelt is a very rugged and strong strap, ideal for people with physically demanding lifestyles. Oh, I wrote this. Aesthetically speaking, it's the perfect belt to complement a toothy lug commando sold boot. And full disclosure, in order to most quickly gather my thoughts on the Anson belts, I actually gave my stepson 
the invincible belt to use for school because he has to wear a black belt to school. So I figured what better way to kind of get a good assessment of these belts than to, to give him one and, and let him wear it and get his thoughts on it. So please welcome to my channel for the first time, my stepson, Evan. Let's hear his thoughts on the, on the invincible belt. I'm just supposed to talk about the belt? <laughs> yep, just start um, talking okay. about the belt. Talk about what you um, like about it. What I like about the Anson Invincible belt is one of the reasons I love it so much is it's so easy to take off and put on. So see, I put it on right here. Just flip the switch, it's off. Saves me 30 seconds to one minute uh, of my day in the morning because I have to get up pretty early to go to school. Uh, another thing is how durable it is. You can wear this thing for about 30 years and probably won't even have a scratch. Another cool thing, the ridges. Instead of it poking through a hole like a belt and uh, if you wanted the belt tighter, you'd poke a hole in the belt. No, you don't need to do that with this. The ridges lock in when you put it in so you'll hear the clipping sound. That means that it's clipped into the ridges and it doesn't show any holes or things that might not look very good in the outside of the belt. Another thing is how light it is. Compared to normal belts uh, made of different materials, they can be heavier. This, light, very light. Oh yeah, and if you want it, the head of the belt off to change it or replace it with something else, just take it off like that. And there's these little beads that you aim in, and there's these little spikes, slide it back in. Good as no, right on. Well done, you are a natural. Okay, and this is according to Anson. The Invinci belt is made of a polyester webbing coated with a thermoplastic polyurethane, which gives it a rubbery feel. It's lightweight, durable, functional, and damn sharp. This is the belt I'd most recommend to anyone who leads a physically high demand lifestyle who requires their gear to be just as rugged as they are. And yes, this belt is basically, it's sweat resistant, it's antibacterial, the backside is very smooth, so it's easy to slide them in. And that's one thing that I have to compliment Anson on is the backsides of their belts are all like a really smooth material, very easy to get them on. I love that about them. Whereas like if I, if I were to compare that to my pigeon tree crafting belts, like some of them are smooth on the outside and some of them are rough out on the inside. But but with Isaac, he sort of, um, you can interchange that. With Isaac, you can kind of personalize that. Same thing with this belt from Noble Men's Apothecary. It's got this, a really nice nubuck feel on the inside, which is not smooth. That's not a ding against these belts at all. Some belts with the rough out on the inside, they're harder to get on, especially when your pants are highly textured like a pair of denim. That rough out against denim Yes, it's really cool because it'll pick up indigo crocking, but it's also kind of hard to slide on. So whereas whereas these belts with this this smooth side on the on the inside, very easy to get on. Now I'll compare hardware to the other belts that I have. So this pigeon tree crafting belt, this is solid raw Japanese brass buckle. It's very robust, very hardy feeling, very thick, very metallic. When you put it on, it's got a real thick heavy weight. Now I've grown to appreciate heavier things. Like I know a lot of guys they do not like heavy things. I do like heavy things. I like my boots to be heavy. I like my watch to be heavy. I like my belts to be heavy. <laughs> I know a lot of guys they want their footwear to be light as a feather. They want their belt to be light. They like their watch to feel like that they're not even wearing anything on their wrist at all. It's all a preference thing. If you're the type that likes lighter weight things then you're in luck with Anson because these these buckles they're not extremely heavy. Like when I compare this buckle to my pigeon tree crafting buckle the weight difference is is considerable. Like I don't have a scale here but I'm sure the camera could sort of capture like these buckles have more of like a tin feel. Not a cheap tin feel but like if I had to give it a an overall feel, I would say that it's more of a lightweight tin I would compare it to. Not to mention you could probably hear the mechanism. The Anson buckles are, they're very high quality. They're made with high precision, I could tell. I believe these are made in an industrial setting, whereas this buckle, for example, it's put together by hand. You could tell the difference between handmade things and industrial things. I would definitely throw Anson more into the industrial made belt. Uh, category. Whereas, you know, this one from Nobleman's Apothecary, a very hardy, robust buckle there, very heavy in comparison 
to this. The classic buckle in silver is just a little bit more lightweight. Yes, does appear to be, you know, largely manufactured by a machine as compared to this, obviously put on by, by human hands on this pigeon tree crafting belt. There's a lot of grain and texture and variation and character throughout the grain of the leather. It's not a perfect leather. And, and as, a, as a leather aficionado, I've come to appreciate that. And not to mention this really thick 14 ounce JNFJ Baker natural veg tan strap that it has is, is very thick and hearty and stuffed with waxes. Like this just feels a little bit more natural, a little bit more handmade. Whereas the Anson belts, they're a little bit more industrialized. When I cut this cordovan belt, through. Actually, there's three layers. So you have the outer layer, which is full grain burgundy leather. And then in the center, there's some sort of center strip. All right. And so I will be honest, when I cut into the Anson belts at first and I saw those different layers, I kind of saw that as a flaw because, you know, my other belts from Pigeon Tree Crafting and Nobleman's Apothecary, they don't have multiple layers stitched together. So I thought that was a flaw initially but then after talking to Anson and getting a better understanding of as to why they do this um, it's to add structure and durability to the belt it's not actually because they're trying to be cheap or anything like that that's what I would have originally thought the important thing to keep in mind here is each company each belt company they they have a different angle that they're coming from they have different goals and each brand uses different methodologies to produce their products that best suits their unique individual brand. In this case, Anson does this. It's not that they can't do a one piece belt. It's that they do it because of the customer base that they're catering to, as well as the brand that they're creating themselves. So again, having multiple layers to a belt is not a flaw after all, like I would have otherwise thought. It's simply a different way of doing things. And that is, the best way to think of it. Okay, so I asked Anson about the three layers that I saw on the belt. They said, hey Dale, thanks so much for reaching out. So that particular belt that you have is our formal leather strap. What you see is the top layer of full grain leather. The spine of the straps is made with a compressed material to give it structure. And then the backing is made with a genuine leather. If we only use the two pieces of leather, full grain and genuine, it would be a very limp strap that wouldn't have much structure because of the soft leathers. The straps with a polyurethane core you are referring to are our concealed carry straps. Those feature a piece of super hard plastic. The polyurethane core gives it added stability for when carrying a firearm. Those are only available in our one and a half inch width though. This formal belt that he's talking about with the, um, with the compressed material that gives it structure, depending on how you look at it, that's an advantage because my pigeon tree crafting belt, so this one's in Hazel Sedgwick, um, and it's a very thick, hardy, resilient leather, but as I've worn it, it has sort of kind of gone a little bit limp, you can see that. Whereas this Anson belt, you see, like it, it holds its shape, you know? It's not nearly as limp because, because of that centerpiece, it holds it. When you're putting it on, it actually is already kind of curved to the shape of your body. So it's actually kind of luxurious putting these belts on. It's a luxurious feel, you know, like this pigeon tree craft, crafting belt that, you know, I have to, I grab the tail and I force it through each of the belt holes and that's not a problem at all. Like I'm used to that, that's not a flaw. I'm just saying that there are pros and cons to doing it each way. And Anson, you know, they, they know what they're doing. They make their belts very cost effective. If they can, you know, in a synthetic way, improve the structure of the belt, that's what they do. And dang it, these belts are very sturdy, but in a comfortable way and in a, in a luxurious way as well. Like I said, getting these through my belt loops, it's effortless. It slides in, it slides through. It's a very nice feeling sliding these belts on. It's a different feeling compared to these thick, hardy leathers that I've grown accustomed to. There are pros and cons of doing it each way, and I kind of want to highlight that. For this vegetable tanned one, it doesn't have that interior, the gray interior strip. It's just two different full grain leathers stitched on top of each other, and you can see the stitching around this, the edging here. Again, that's, that's not a problem at all. The same thing with the Invincibelt has a fibrous material down the center. So it's like it's like one full piece of rubber that surrounds like one fibrous piece down through the center. And um, that's also for durability. If you are the type of guy who is looking for a classic belt look, then I would say that Anson is absolutely a great bet. Not to mention if you're a college kid getting started like trying to put together a professional wardrobe, I think that the best bang for your buck is the Anson belts. 
So what's really cool with Anson is they really like to make it simple for you. They really make the whole process very easy, not to mention they offer a lifetime guarantee. They're very easy to work with. They're a very responsive company. I've seen reviews where like a customer messed up their belt by accident and Anson just ships them a new piece. Um, or if, if one of these pieces fails, Anson backs their stuff for life. They, they stand by, behind their quality and the durability and they will make it right. They are a very, a very customer service oriented company. And I love that about Anson because they do not want their customers dissatisfied with their product at all. And they stand by it 100%. And that's, that's something I could get behind. So, so what's really cool also about Anson is basically to keep it simple, every one of their components costs 25 bucks. So if, if you just wanted to buy this buckle, it'd be $25. If you just wanted to buy the strap, it'd be $25. If you wanted to buy a buckle and a strap together, it'd be $49. I would not recommend that. I would recommend going with a box set because if you were to buy this buckle and this strap, that costs you basically $50. But if you bought multiple straps, multiple buckles kit, which is what I got, then it brings the cost down to closer to around $17 per belt. That is such a good value for what you're getting here. I would opt for that, honestly. I would opt for, you want the variety to sort of get familiarized with the product and with the brand and to get an understanding of what you're gonna like. Cause you know, you might see the picture of this rose gold traditional buckle on the website, but then you get it and you're like, wow, that's not for me at all. Me on the other hand, I'm, I'm a copper lover. So I was absolutely just taken aback by this rose gold. This is my favorite buckle. And then I have this classic silver one. This is a buckle for mo for probably 95% of guys out there. It's classic, it's iconic, it's a staple look, it's clean. You know, I could see how these traditional buckles, they kind of remind me of like a skeleton watch where they kind of show the interior mechanisms of, of the inner workings of the watch. So that's how it looks like when it's, when it's buckled. I think it looks really cool actually. I think it's like a really neat, like stylish, like a little fashion forward maybe for some guys, but I think it's just, amazing the, the way that you could see you could see the belt the belt texture poking out there i think that's really awesome this is turning into a long review but there's just so much to talk about with these belts there's there's a lot to understand there's a lot to take in not to mention like i'm only covering three of the many many buckles that they have as well as three of the many many straps so they have so many options i would compare ants and belts in a lot of ways to the tiebar.com so think of it like most stores that you go to, you can end up buying a tie clasp for 50 or $100 or $150. You go to the tiebar.com and you're getting a tie clasp for $15. I have some from J. Crew that are full sterling silver that were originally like $100, $120 that I got on sale, obviously, for like 40 bucks. Guess what? Most all my tie bars, most all my tie clips... They're from the tie bar. Why? Because they're affordable and they are a great value. So that's what I would compare Anson belts to. You could end up landing yourself like such a phenomenal belt collection for not a lot of money. And the fact that Anson stands behind each product, if, if any of these fail on you, then they will replace it or repair it for free. So you cannot beat that. So I would say that Anson belts are perfect for, for probably most guys out there. I would say that anybody who's looking to build up a professional wardrobe without breaking the bank, these belts are for you. I would say that if you're a guy who prioritizes comfort over all else, these belts are for you. <laughs> and people who like the idea of accessorizing really up their accessories game, guess what? These belts are for you. Comfort is there, style is there, affordability is there. So if you're looking for just a great belt, and looking to build up a very interesting and awesome cool belt collection, this might be the way that you want to do it is with Anson because even if you never thought that you were going to be a belt guy, with Anson you could become a belt guy without breaking the bank. And one of, one of the coolest buckles that Anson has that I have to admit they're a little bit too out there for me, but they have what's called the golf buckle, which comes with the Anson's classic shape. There's an incredible patented so this is patented by Anson only. So you'll only find this design with Anson, from Anson. It's a 3D studded golf ball design, which is so eye-catching. And for any golf addict in your life, that would be the perfect gift for them. They would absolutely fall head, heads over heels for that, for that buckle. Again, I'm not much of a golf guy. You know, I'm not much of a sports guy for that matter. <laughs> but I would say that um, anybody who's into, into golf, into sports, they would probably really, really love that. 
that golf buckle, um, and it comes in multiple various different colors, very sharp. Not to mention, they also have a buckle called the Onyx buckle, which is also very sharp. They're two-toned, so we're talking like silver and black, or gold and black, or gold and silver, so they have a lot of, just so many options. Oh my god, it's overwhelming. I can't even begin to cover them all. They offer a lot of really, really great um, options for accessorizing. Again, a lot of concealed carry types, they really like these belts, and they actually put them to the test. I actually met a guy named The Contemporary Gentleman. He's on Instagram, and he's on YouTube, and I got to talking to him. He's a very nice guy, very great guy, very insightful. I reached out to him because he does videos where he kind of puts um, a lot of these commercialized products to the test in a tactical sense, and he's got some just awesome videos where he's jumping around, rolling around, shooting his gun, like pulling his gun out of his holster and he has entrusted his concealed carry to Anson for the past for for over half a year and what he had to say it was say about it was really cool he said in over 6 months this belt shows minimal wear having two clips placed over the belt literally every day and the weight of a holster pushing down and out has done nothing to the integrity of the belt and nearly nothing to its appearance i would confidently wear this strap exposed with a shirt tucked in at any time the importance of the of the non-concealed carry strap performing so well is that you don't have to only go with the concealed carry line. You can branch out to all of the amazing different belts Anson has to offer and still carry a weapon, even my particularly large Glock 17. The buckle has performed effortlessly under the stress of pulling a holster close to my body, and it also looks fantastic. So there you go. I mean, that's that's coming from a guy, the contemporary gentleman. Give him a follow, by the way. He's he's a fascinating character, a great guy. Even though that we're we're coming from two different communities, I'm coming from the boot community. He's coming more from the everyday carry, concealed carry, um, law enforcement slash military type angle. He highly recommends these belts, and I do too, because it's it's just so cool that people from all different walks of life can find uses for this stuff. And I think it's just so neat that, that he is able to like, strap a gun to these things, and they hold up like a tank, you know what I mean? So if, if you're a concealed carry type, I would also recommend these belts to you as well. These are just awesome belts for everyday carry, awesome belts for durability, for, for good looks, for stylish looks. If you want to go sleek, you could go sleek. If you want to go... Uh, fashion forward, you could go fashion forward. I mean, the options are endless. So, so yes, I hope I did a good job comparing these belts to the rest of my belt collection. Yes, I think they are something definitely to consider if you're in the market for some good belts and you really want to accessorize and you really want to put them to the test, especially these in Invinci belts. Like if you're the rugged type, you owe yourself at least to try out one of these Invinci belts because it feels like Kevlar almost to the touch. And so I also asked Anson about their warranty and their guarantee because it's kind of vague on their website and I actually asked them about that. So yeah, let me read this. So thank you so much for reaching out. Honestly, we are insanely gracious with our lifetime guarantee and cover absolutely anything that a customer feels should be. That we have a lifetime guarantee on the functionality of all of our products. I asked them, you know, what would happen if the customer for some reason somehow damaged the buckle or the belt from high use, high stress. Their reply was in that instance, we would absolutely replace it as it should be able to hold up to anything that you put it through. At the end of the day, we always want our customers to be in a working Anson belt. If they ever have one break, we will always replace it for them. If a customer ever feels like their belt is showing premature wear though, we will always take care of them. We know that they are probably some of our best advocates since they've been wearing it every single day. We have a little bit different of an approach to customer service than a lot of companies. I myself, as the owner, am still very involved in our day-to-day -day customer service as well as answer the phone 80% of the time. Oh, I also answer personally to all of our social inquiries and handle our social media so that my ear is always to the ground with what our customers are saying and experiencing. We are a small family business and want to take care of our customers like family. There isn't any fine print or anything like that, just an honest guarantee backed by the owners themselves, my father and I. So there you have it. Anson. That's what I love about them. They love to talk to their customers. They love to interact with them on social media. That's what I love about Grantstone. That's what I love about a lot of these other small batch makers is they love that interaction with their customers because they want the story to continue and to evolve. And that's what Anson, in my book, uh, does very well. They are very responsive to their customers. They're always reaching out. They're always looking at Instagram, seeing how their customers are wearing their belts. That's a great thing. That's a rare thing. You don't see that everywhere these days. I follow the owner. His name is David Ferre, and he's a very charismatic guy, and every Friday, 
he does what's called Free Belt Friday, and I think that's so great, where he gives away a free belt. So he'll get up on his Instagram account and he'll do a giveaway. It's very cool. I think he's I think he's a great guy. I think he's a charismatic guy. I think he truly, genuinely cares about his customers. I can tell in the way that I've corresponded with him back and forth on Instagram and through email. He's a very nice guy, stands by his word. I've seen instances where customers in their reviews, I've read customer reviews where, yeah, their belt, they damaged it or something went wrong with it and Anson just sent them a replacement. So you have that peace of mind with Anson. You also have that interaction, which I love. I love knowing the people that make my stuff. I love interacting with them and that's what Anson excels at. They're very socially oriented towards their customers. They treat them like family and you can't get anything better than that. And to me, that's just the coolest thing. Like I get to talk to the people that make my stuff. And as a collector, that's what I love the most. Probably more than the product itself is actually getting to communicate and interact with the people that produce this stuff. This isn't the end all be all review that I would say I'm gonna do of these Anson belts. I'd like to do more later. I just kind of wanted to get this out because I've had these belts for about a month, month and a half now. I wanted to get my thoughts out because I think it's interesting to compare brands and I think it's interesting but the more you get into the nuances of these things I think it's interesting to compare the small batch to the more commercialized products and discovering the advantages to both because there are advantages to both I'm done rambling for now thanks a lot for watching I am on Instagram you can follow me there my username is aerosurfer LV stay tuned because I have a lot more reviews boot reviews belt reviews coming up so anyways thanks a lot for watching guys and I will see y'all in my next video